Hi there guys, it's Adam Martin here and welcome back to another video and it's time for another unboxing and review. We've got a brand new Doctor Who animation that we need to take a look at and this time it's the turn of the Celestial Toymaker. Now this is a first Doctor story from all the way back in 1966 and I think it's fair to say it's one of the most I don't know if beloved's the right word, but the most intriguing stories of the William Hartnell era. There's nothing else quite like it from this first period of Doctor Who's history. Now, it's a four-episode story. We sadly only have one original episode surviving, which is the final episode, the final test, it's called, funnily enough. But the other three episodes are missing. Like all missing episodes, audio recordings survive, and the team at Big Finish Creative UK have worked in tandem with various studios to put this together. And I think it's fair to say when they announced it, it got the fandom talking a bit because they were using 3D animation, which is something they'd only tried once before for a singular episode of The Web of Fear. And if you remember that, that got a very mixed response at the time. But, I'm, you know, for myself personally, I'm open to them trying all kinds of different animation styles. I think certain stories in Doctor Who's history suit different animation styles like compared to others. Now there was a screening of this back in March at the BFI. I wasn't able to attend sadly but again the reaction seemed uh, positive from some corners, less positive from other corners but it's finally arrived and I got to check it out. Before we go into the review, interestingly when I talk about this I'll be talking about this from the the colour version. They always include a colour animation and a black and white animation. Usually I'd watch these animations in black and white because that is the original format in which the original episodes would have been made and if there's surviving episodes I normally watch those over the animations but with the Celestial Toymaker I did something a bit different. I watched the animated version from start to finish in colour. I've never done that before at home with a Doctor Who animation and that's because the Celestial Toymaker you know is this sort of very psychedelic otherworldly sort of story and I wanted to check it out in its full colour glory to see what they'd done with it. How did I think of it? We'll have to discuss that later in the video. But enough of me yapping, let me show you what the releases I got and we'll unbox them and take a look. Okay, so here is what we're working with. Now, as usual with the animations, I tend to get two out of the three variants available. I get the standard DVD and I get the Blu-ray Steelbook. Now, why is that? Well, the DVD has a reversible cover, which lines up with the other DVDs, which I'll show you a bit later. And the Blu-ray Steelbook, it's just nice, man. It's just nice, and again, it lines up with other steelbooks I have, whereas the standard Blu-ray would just maybe look like an odd one out. We'll focus on the DVD first, and here is the cover for the Celestial Toymaker. You can see him there in the left-hand side, looking very villainous and scheming as he gazes on at the TARDIS, which has just landed. Again, even that setting, you know, with the floodlights on it, makes it feel like there's this, this epicness, this grandness that's about to occur. I will say, though, even though, yes, the Toymaker is the central focus, I get that, it would have been nice to maybe see some other elements from this animation included on the cover. Nothing, like, majorly spoilery, but, you know, some other maybe like a, a snap of the obstacle course or a look at the dolls or some of the playing cards and things like that you know that could have been very interesting I mean this is a nice cover nonetheless I love the color blends as well but I don't know a few more elements from the animation would have been quite nice too here is the spine. You've obviously got the current Doctor Who logo at the time of recording and the custom font used for the Celestial Toymaker there now then on to the back let's see what we've got the blurb reads, the Celestial Toymaker sees the Doctor and his companions separated when they come up against the Toymaker. While the Doctor plays the trilogic game, Stephen and Dodo are forced to play their own seemingly childish but ultimately dangerous games, with the aim of being reunited and getting back to the TARDIS. Who will be the first to make a false move in the Battle of Wits? And will the TARDIS ever escape the Toymaker's snare? It says below, fans of Doctor Who have long lamented the loss of the original 1966 master recordings of all except one of the Celestial Toymaker. All episodes have been animated in both colour and black and white while using the original off-air audio recordings, which is standard with these animations now. We know they include both the colour and the black and white versions on there, and any original episodes that survive, they always include too. And I'll just say, what's nice is on this, you can watch it with the original episode, so you can watch one to three animated, and then the original episode four if you're so inclined. There's also a bunch of special features that are listed there, but I'll talk more about those when we open it up. But if you want to have a little pause and have a read at what's on the back, you can do. Taking the slip cover off, the front and back is exactly the same. So if you get this second hand or whatever without the slip cover, you're not necessarily missing much. It's all the same. 
Opening it up then, let's see what we have. It's two discs, this release. So disc one is the animations in black and white. It also has the original episode four, should you want that. But then on disc two is the color version of the animation as well as the majority of the bonus features. So yes, I know people say, oh, well, we'll cram it all on one disc on DVD. I don't think that would be, <laughs> be quite possible. We forget, guys, the DVD format is nearly 30 years old, okay? Nearly 30 years old, which is crazy. But yes, the two discs there, and that is the DVD version, as I said, both the black and white and color animations. It does come with a few booklets. As always, it comes with a merch booklet, which I can skim through. I mean, look, it, we're Doctor Who fans. We're probably going to buy it all anyway. But the meat of it is this, which is the little booklet for the animation itself. So you get the production notes, which alongside snapshots of the animation, it gives you a bit of insight into how this episode was born, how it was written, how it was made back in 1966, like reactions when it went out, some contemporary reviews of the time. And a little bit of history as to how the story became lost, you know, where it was sold to and ultimately how most of it is sadly missing. For the disc contents then, on disc one, this is the black and white animation. It's got audio commentary featuring a range of different people who worked on it. Peter Purvis, who played Stephen, is a constant throughout. You've got production subtitles, which is always a great feature to have. You've got the original version of episode four, The Final Test, which once again has commentary and production subtitles to it. You also get a photographic reconstruction of the first three episodes using uh, off-screen and production images with soundtrack recordings. So this is a really neat version of the Celestial Toy Maker, which I haven't checked out myself yet, but I'm definitely intrigued to, to see how it holds up. On disc two, then, you've got the color version of the animation. You've also got the uh, photo gallery. You've got the escape room. I'll talk more about that in a sec. You've got an, an interview, a short interview with Carmen Silvera, who played Clara the Clown in this and a bunch of other characters too. I think she played the queen. You've got a little making of as well, uh, just to give you an insight into how you know painstaking this is. And I didn't realize they were using things like motion capture and stuff like that. But it, again, really recommend watching it. It's just a great insight into how this all came together. You've also got the Sylvester McCoy intro to the surviving episode from the Hartnell Years VH Hess tape, which came back out in 1991 as well as a bunch of PDF documents, which you can access if you put your disc into a suitable drive. On the back, you've got the actual information about the episode as to who was in it, of course, production crew, the 2024 version, who was behind that. And then I love this on the booklet. So you've got the original transmission dates and the audience um, the audience figures approximately. So you can see that episodes one and two held firm, eight million viewers, one of the success stories of season three at the time. And then the dancing floor had a big bump. It got up to 9.4, sadly dropping for the final episode at just under eight million. But again, season three is a bit all over the place with viewing figures. And sadly, a lot of it is in the, is in the lower end. However, however, this, the Celestial Toy Maker, does stand out as being one of the more successful adventures of this period. So the reason why I get the DVD, even though it's nearly 30 years old as a format, is for this, the reversible cover. This might look familiar to many of you. This, of course, is the original style that Doctor Who DVDs came out in. And what's great is every time a new animation comes out, they always include a reversible cover. Why would you do this aside from a novelty? Well, look at that spine. That will line up very nicely with all the remaining DVDs I have on the shelf. And that is, yes, a principal reason why I get it. Now, eventually, when they do a season three box set, which probably isn't going to be until 2035, <laughs> I joke, um, I, when that box set eventually comes out, I will trade in that DVD. But as it stands, I will have this on my shelf. The DVD, just for context, retails for about £15 at the moment as it's come out, which, yes, might be pricey for a DVD. You can always wait a little bit, see if that price comes down over time, but that is the rough ballpark figure you're going to be paying for it. Now, here is the other version I have, the Blu-ray Steelbook. Now, the cover's interesting because it's not too dissimilar from the DVD. You've still got the TARDIS there amongst the floodlights. The toy maker this time, though, is hovering over it ominously with his hand hovering over it as well. Normally, with the Steelbooks from the animations, the artwork is uh, quite a bit different compared to the, the DVD ones, whereas this one is almost, almost similar, you know, just different positions. And that's not necessarily a problem. It still looks great. I love the the uh, menace of the toy maker there but i don't know i i was expecting something wildly wildly different as is with the others but that's not necessarily a bad thing still really well designed on this one you can see a few elements floating around the toy maker there that feature in this episode which is a nice touch here is the spine of it still the modern logo and the custom toy maker logo but again that'll look nice with the steel books you already have on your shelf 
On the back, the blurbs are exactly the same as you'd expect. You can see some more elements from the episode, like there's the Trilogic game, the robot that displays the counter, some of the blocks from the obstacle course, great stuff. Taking it out of its little holder here, so this is the front. It does look quite nice, doesn't it? Really good. On the back, it's those elements blown up, so you can see more of them there. And this, this is what I'm talking about, how psychedelic this animation gets. But I think it suits perfectly the style of the Celestial Toy Maker. I'm certain it's almost what they would have done back in 1966 had they had you know, bottomless pits of money. Opening it up, there is the full spread, and that that looks gorgeous. If you, you could have that as like a landscape frame almost, couldn't you? On the inside then, these are Blu-ray discs, but again, it's two discs with the same contents as the DVDs on the same order as well. Taking the discs out, here is what the innit of the Blu-ray steelbook looks like, and that's gorgeous. This is the obstacle course sequence that we see, and it just looks great, doesn't it? I mean, it's bonkers, it's wacky, it's, it's bizarre. So the Blu-ray Steelbook, if you want to get that, that retails more for around the £30 mark, which again, some might say is a bit pricey. You can always wait for a discount, but the Steelbooks are weird because some of them end up never selling and some of them you can still find in HMVs and other stores, you know, brand new for a majorly discounted price, whereas some of them go really quickly. Maybe this one will go more quickly because it's the Celestial Toy Maker, because it's more revered amongst fandom. I don't know. But yeah, if you want the Steelbook, I'd get it sooner rather than later, just in case. So overall, that is the unboxing of the DVD and the Blu-ray Steelbook versions. And now, what about my thoughts on the actual content? So that was the unboxing of the DVD and the Blu-ray Steelbook that I've just shown you. But what did I think about the animation generally? Well, it's fair to say I want to give a massive shout out to Big Finish Creative and I believe it's Shapeshifter, the main studio that worked on this. They did, I think, a phenomenal job with this story. Considering the Celestial Toy Maker is one of those, a few publicity photographs exist, but there's no telesnaps of the actual episodes. We've got the one final episode, but they've gone with absolute creative freedom with this, which I... I I think they should. I totally agree with that principle. Gary Russell, who's like the head honcho of this team, uh, stresses that as well, that, you know, if you just animated what we think was there in 1966, it probably wouldn't be that exciting because from what we see of the final episode, you know, classic 60s BBC, it does look a bit... It does look a bit flimsy, a bit cheap. Very interesting, for sure, but I really like how they've widened the scale of this. You really do feel like you're in the toy maker's dream world. And there's some setups that really benefit from this 3D animation. I love... The opening scene, the desolation when they walk out of the TARDIS just in this blank space, that looks so great. I love the little psychedelic trippy sequence we get in the uh, the dancing floor segment. That's really cool and a great use of filling time where it's just audio, there's not really any dialogue and just to make it that bit more interesting. Naturally, some of the models people say, oh, it looks like, you know, a PlayStation 2 character. I, I wasn't really phased by that. I know with 3D animation, it can be really hard to get expressions down and communicate the feeling of characters, not just in this, but in 3D animation generally. But I think after, you know, after a really short time, I wasn't really focusing on oh, does it look good, quote-unquote. I was more immersed in the story. And I think, again, the elements really enhance this story with the with the freedom they had, the liberties. Like, the different games that are played, they look so fantastic. I, I, and, again, really lend themselves to this really weird, wacky concept that the first Doctor, Stephen, and Dodo inhabit themselves in. It was so interesting watching the fourth episode. Again, as I said, that's the only surviving episode we have of this. And to watch it, because I know that so well, I've seen it so many times, but to watch it in animated form and it look completely different, I, I was worried I was going to sort of react negatively against it, but I actually really liked it. I really liked what I saw with this. And overall, if this is the standard of 3D animation that we've got now, and they say, you know, things can only improve over time, then I'm definitely open to them doing more 3D animations in the future. I do think some stories may lend themselves perhaps more to the 2D style, and I mean, I guess with the 2D style, you've definitely got more, more assets for it available at the minute. At the end of the day, though, it's just great to have another missing story as it were now on the shelf you know alongside the other dvds it just helps we've got versions that feel that bit more complete and for anyone out there who says this isn't like it was in 1966 at all i was there i watched it and i want it to be as exactly as it was as possible that's absolutely fine and the you know the surviving episode isn't going anywhere they haven't destroyed it I, but i'm all for having new versions of this just like we've had in the past let's say with the underwater menace with the abominable snowmen i think taking creative liberties when it comes to animation of missing doctor who 
is absolutely valid. But those are just my thoughts on it. But I want to know what you think. Are you going to pick up the Celestial Toymaker animation? And if you are, are you going to get the DVD? Are you going to get the standard Blu-ray? Or are you going to get the Blu-ray Steelbook? And just let me know your general thoughts about this animation as well. What did you think about it? Let me know down below. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like on it. It does really help us out. And subscribe to the channel as well. We would love to have your board here with us. In the meantime, I've been Adam Martin from AMTV Who. Thank you for joining me. And I'll see you next time.